Hey, Steve Thompson here. I hope you're well. Um, something I'm being asked about increasingly at the moment is about ACES, uh, Advanced Subscription Agreements. What I'm talking about here is the Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme, or it could be the Enterprise Investment Scheme for that matter, or both. Um, what I'm seeing more and more at the moment, I've been asked, I'm getting asked just like two or three times a week at the moment about them, and I thought it'd be worth just discussing them. What they are is, you know, in the ordinary course of events, you have Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme or SAS Investment or EIS Investment. You have to issue shares in your company in exchange for the cash investment. Uh, and one of the issues I think what's happening is I think in the current climate, there's a lot of uncertainty around valuations. So that's one of the difficulties when you're kind of early stage company, you're trying to issue shares, agree a valuation for the investors is quite difficult at the early stage because, you know, you're in a known quantity. And in the current climate where things are a little bit ropey, it gets a bit more awkward in terms of what the potential valuation might be. Now, in the US, there's a very common mechanism called the SAFE, uh, S-A-F-E, and it's basically a mechanism by which investors pile the cash into the company and at some later stage, it's converted into shares when they all agree a valuation, maybe some other VCs, whatever, get involved. And at that point, it converts and the uh, shares are then issued. That's all well and good. And people see, you know, a lot of US people say, well, can we do that in the UK? Um, yes and no. As I mentioned at the beginning, SES, EIS, the very, very strict criteria around them. And it's got to be an issue of shares in exchange for cash investment. A loan or to equity conversion, debt to equity conversion is not eligible under the SES and EIS rules. That's very, very clear and has been for years. Now, having said all that, we do have something called the Advanced Subscription Agreement, or ASA, or ASA, um, as I like to call it for short. Now, what this is, it's basically like a safe in the US. It's, it, it's very, very similar in many, many ways, apart from uh, some important differences. And again, I'm no expert on the US safe, so please don't correct me. Well, you can correct me in the comments if you want to, but I'm not um, uh, trying to be an expert on those. What I'm talking about is from a UK perspective here. If you're a UK founder or a UK investor and you're looking at an ASA, these are the sort of things you need to think about. Um, and what an ACER actually allows you to do is almost act like a loan to equity conversion. So you can put the cash in up front under the terms of an ACER and it can be converted at a later date into equity or the shares can be formally issued. And that's again usually when other investors get involved and you can then agree a valuation uh, that you're all happy with and you get kind of rolled into that. Now, I have never liked them very much, ACEs, you know, cars on the table, they'd never be my favourite. And you know, the, the key reason why is because I think the SAS and EAS rules are already tricky enough, complex enough. Uh, so why add an extra layer of complexity by putting some sort of agreement, which to the outside world looks very much like a loan to equity conversion. Uh, so, you know, you, you're kind of treading on fine ice here uh, in terms of whether uh, it's going to be eligible anyway. HMRC have been quite quiet about them. ACES have been around for a while. And then about two years ago, they came out and they wanted to clarify the usage of them. And what they did say is that they are sort of broadly happy with them, provided there are certain conditions are met. And I'll put a link in the notes below what you need to do, sort of box you need to tick. But basically, you're looking at two or three important criteria. Uh, first one is that it is non-refundable. You put the cash in under an ASA, you're not getting it back. It's got to convert into equity. And the second real key one is around um, it's got to have a long stop of six months. So basically, you've got to the shares have got to be issued within six months. Otherwise, it fails. You know, people used to quite commonly use 12 months, whereas HMRC came in and said, no, 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 six months is the maximum. So that's what you're looking at, really. Those are sort of the two key criteria. Um, so you're going to have uh, it's non-refundable and it's got to be uh, converted within six months. OK, fine. So we're sort of broadly happy with that. Now, um, what I should add as well, one thing you can do here, which I think I highly recommend if you go down this route, is that when you go through advanced assurance application, which again, I wouldn't always recommend you do with HMRC, when you raise the money to SAS, you can put, get the ACER together in advance and then you know put it in with your, your application and then you can get HMRC to look at it and approve it. Uh, to make sure that they're happy with the ACER agreement and then you've got kind of got the belt and braces in place that's what I would always want to do. Um, what someone else was going to say about the ACER yeah I mean one of the things I find quite mildly uh, amusing and maybe again investor or founder can correct me on this is the fact that you know one of the key benefits of an ACER is to say you, you can put the cash in up front and you don't have to agree you don't have to agree the valuation up front you agree the valuation uh, later on when everyone comes in and you kind of get converted into the, under those terms. 
I keep saying converted. It's not strictly converted because it's always going to be for equity. Just be clear on that, I suppose. But because you've got a six month long stop in it, you've got to have some sort of valuation in there because you've got to have a fallback that six months, if the investment falls due, and I'll come into that in a moment, you've got to convert to, so you've still got to put a valuation anyway. So I find that mildly amusing. Anyway, there's a really good article which kind of highlights, or goes beyond the reasons, and or explains very well the reasons I don't like ACEs. Um, really from this perspective of an investor, I already mentioned that I think the, the rules are complicated enough, so why have them? They do have their place though, so let me just say that. They're very common, they do have their place. But just go into these with your eyes wide open. This is a great article, again, I'll put a link to this in the uh, notes below and explains here about what they are. Yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so the, the big, uh, so here's the sort of thing where it gets the kind of meat of it in terms of the risks with them. Uh, risk number one, the startup crashes before the ACE converts. So ordinarily, you know, if you put your cash into a uh, seed and price investment scheme investment, you know, a few months later you get your SCIS three form back, which allows you to claim the tax relief. So you've got your fifty percent tax relief back banked. If it crashes, you then get um, the remaining fifty percent. You can get uh, income tax loss, income tax loss relief on at your marginal rate of tax, whatever it is, twenty, forty, forty five percent. So you're pretty well covered. However, if it crashes before the ASA converts then in this case you haven't had got your SES relief yet so you've lost out on that and potentially lost out on your income loss relief as well because you haven't got equity at that point formally. Uh, so risk number one, big ouch there potentially. Second risk here he highlights is the chance of uh, no chance of fill or kill. Again commonly under an investment round you, know, you have a target investment of 500 grand or whatever the figure is and if you don't reach that 500 grand which you need to be able to reach your next milestone the 500 grand has come from you know it's a very uh, specific number because you've worked out what you need to raise to be able to get to your next point. If you go in under an ACER, you can go in at the very beginning, your 50 grand or 100 grand, whatever, lands into a pot. Uh, the investors are running around trying to raise the money. They can't actually do it within six months um, or perhaps, you know, it could be longer than six months, but whatever, they, they, can't, they can't complete the 500 grand raise, but they've still got your 50 or 100 grand left in there. There's nothing you can do about it because one of the terms of it is you sign an agreement that says you can't get the cash back. So you're going to convert with the fifty hundred grand. It might not be nothing to do anything with. So you end up, you may just die anyway. Uh, so the fill or kill is a big risk. Um, uncertain terms is another one uh, to think about in terms of, you know, you, you would uh, normally expect when you go in with an SES uh, share issue, you with the other investors or just the SES, you have some sort of shareholders agreement. Again, at this stage, you've come in early. That hasn't been done yet because you haven't got to the stage where it converts, where everyone else comes in. The founders are going to wait typically and say, right, well, when we get to that proper round, we'll do all the shareholders agreement. We'll get all the terms in place. Just give us a new cash for now um, and we'll, we'll, we'll formalise all that in due course. The problem is your cash is already in the mix. The shareholders agreement comes out six months later, whenever. Uh, you're like, oh, I'm not very happy with that. What are you going to do about it? It's tough. Your cash is locked in. You've got no negotiating power as an investor at this point under an ACER because, I say, you've committed your money. You can't ask for it back. Um, and that's uh, that's what it is. Um, the other thing is uncertain timings. Yeah, just trying to time your tax relief. No, actually, this, this is a slightly different point. Yeah, there's two points he makes here. Um, he's talking about the eligibility on the two-year trading uh, limit, which is actually now three years since 6th of April 2023. Uh, got formal assent that new rule just in July, just right now, um, this month, July 2023. Um, yeah, and talking about how if you're trying to sort of match your tax year ends, you know, 5th of April tax year, right, okay, I put the cash in, uh, now under an ACER, I'm getting towards, you know, it's, this example it's like, you know, January or something, it's going to convert in six months in the next tax year, yeah, that'll, that'll work out right for my tax liability. But what if it fills early? What if they fill it in, in March? Um, in the current tax year and you weren't expecting it it's just kind of it's adding more complexity you can't time it as well because you're at the whim of the investors sorry at the whim of the founders in terms of when they can um, actually convert and do the actual formal round um, other risks around warranty disclosure process and you have warranties and disclosures again that's all probably going to get formalized at the time of the formal round uh, the equity conversion your cash is already in the mix you've got no neg negotiating power you may look at it and go do you know what I'm not very happy with that what do you do about it? Tough, your cash is in there. Um, and I think yeah, the final point here is is key. I mean, <laughs> it makes an already brittle SES yes, even more so. It's just it's it's very very tricky area 
and you just added another layer of complexity on top of it. I think if you get the ACER into your advanced assurance agreement, you can sleep a little bit better at night because you know HMC have looked at it. But then I think from an investor's perspective, again, you're quite comfortable. But all those things I just mentioned above and the skies mentioned here, absolutely critical in terms of yeah, you kind of slightly at the whim here of the founders and the other investors, what they choose to do and how they choose to negotiate at the time. So really great article. I think I say ACES certainly have their place. They're more and more common these days, these advanced subscription agreements. But treat them with caution, be careful, and make sure you get HMRC to look at them. I would recommend, don't have to, be your choice, but I would strongly recommend it. And um, yeah, my name is Steve Livingston, I hope you found that useful.